Hello everyone! Welcome back to a new art video. I have added a picture of my final product here onto my materials page this time, so now you know what we're getting into right from the start. And as you can see here, I've got my pencil sketch already drawn out, again, like with all my Inktober pieces. And now I'm adding in a bunch of masking fluid. This would be easier if you had an actual picture. So I'm going to put right up here in the corner my original picture that I took in my driveway so that you can see what I'm talking about here. But I'm putting this masking fluid down everywhere I want to be white like you would normally use masking fluid. But for this particular cocoon, chrysalis, pardon me, sorry, uh, I chose to put masking fluid down everywhere there was going to be white or orange, basically anywhere on this chrysalis that I didn't want to be black. I made sure to put down masking fluid, and I did that because I wanted to get some really sharp, definite transitions between the black and the orange of this little monarch butterfly who's sleeping in his chrysalis still. I didn't want them to bleed into each other at all. I wanted that really crisp definition, especially for these, these sections I'm doing right now with the big ovally sections of the orange wings. I definitely wanted that to be very distinct and bright and separate from the, the black that I'm going to start putting in here in a minute. put a little masking fluid around the edge. Oh, this was this was the illustration that I decided to try some water droplets. I hadn't actually really tried a water droplet before and I decided to give it a shot with this one because I thought it would look really good and it was part of my original drawing that I put in or my original photo had the water droplets in it. And now I'm putting in my blue background here. I started out by, oh, what is that? big. <laughs> I must have dropped something over my camera. Apologies, you guys. Everybody. Um, I wet the paper here very carefully with my big brush, being careful not to put any water where the cocoon is. Very carefully outlined it, and then I'm starting in with a very pale blue wash. This butterfly chrysalis was sitting on bucket. I had a blue bucket in my driveway from... I don't remember what it was for, but it's been sitting in my driveway for a while. And a little butterfly decided to put a chrysalis. I suppose he would have been a caterpillar prior to chrysalising. But he decided to make his little cocoon on the lip of my small blue bucket. And so this is why we have a nice blue background. And I kept the blue background because I thought it looked really good with the, with the orange and black chrysalis. So you can see the little lip there where, where he's attached. And now I'm adding in just this little bit of shadow. I work on this blue bucket not for too long. It's a pretty simple, it's a pretty simple background. Just the smooth blue with some nice shadow gradients. There's my cloth again. It's easy to wipe stuff off once you put things down. If you put a little too much pigment somewhere, it's easy to just blot it off. As long as it's not dry. If it's dry, it's not going anywhere. Now I'm starting with the cap of this chrysalis, and even though I didn't put masking fluid in between each of the little segments of the chrysalis cap, oh, that's a bad kitty. It's a bad kitty jumping up on my computer. All right, sorry, you guys. I didn't put masking fluid in the separation between the caps. I made sure to paint pretty carefully exactly where I wanted the gray, so you still get a little bit of that line delineation between each cap section. And now I'm going in and putting some color on the wings now, finally, this black. When you're working with a mostly black color like this, it's especially important to start with a really light tone until you know exactly how it's gonna shape up in your final product. You wanna start really, really light and build up small layers. So I'm starting around the edges of each shape and working my way inward with my soft gray, soft gray color here. Now I'm adding in some little darker spots. That top piece I knew was going to be very, very black. 
It has one of my best highlights on it, that little black piece at the top, very shiny, a very white spot amidst a very black, black stem. And I wanted to make sure to keep that, keep that through the whole thing because it was such a, it was such a sharp contrast and I really enjoyed it. Now I've got my smaller brush out here, you can see, and I am, I think this is a five or a three. I'm putting in just these fine little lines of detail. With something like this, most of these details are going to be covered up by the time, by the time you're finished, but they do, they do shine through. They add complexity and, and layering, and it makes it look like a more three-dimensional product than it would have if you had just started out exactly how you wanted it. Sorry that, sorry that tap. I was looking at my paint brushes. So it turns out. I do not know what number this is. I think it's a number five is what I'm using right now. It looks a little too big to be my number two watercolor brush. Now these wings I knew at the top here were going to be very dark. So I'm picking out some really nice detail lines. As you go through with your shading, sometimes it's easy to lose the original shape that you had going. And you want to make sure to bring that shape back around. As you, as you work, you want to keep darkening those outer edges before you lose the little wing shapes all together. Now it looks like I'm adding in a little bit more blue, a little bit more shading. I made sure to let the background dry completely before I started working on the cocoon. And I made sure to make, the co make sure the cocoon, sorry, I keep saying cocoon, it's a chrysalis, but I'm sure you guys know what I mean, you people, everybody of you. But I made sure to let each part dry completely before I started doing the opposite part because that's how you keep those lines really, really crisp. And I wanted this to be so, so crispy, guys. I wanted to make this a really pretty illustration. And it did end up being very pretty. So I guess all of that effort paid off. Now, if you can see my little original image up there in the corner, I actually have a downloadable copy of that picture if, if anyone wants to try drawing this chrysalis along with me here. You can go ahead and download that picture so that you can see for yourself. Now see I've got my blue in here. I'm adding in this shadow. This is the shadow of the chrysalis as it rests against the side of the bucket. It's really important to make it as much as I shade the object itself, the shadow it casts, is really what causes it to look three-dimensional in the end. So you really have to make sure that cast shadow is in there too, even on, even on a solid blue backdrop like we've got going here. Now that I've got my blue in pretty good, I'm going to go back in and pick out, pick out some finer details with a little bit of a darker mix of color. Now this is all just black India ink that I've diluted with various levels of water. Obviously the darker the ink is, the less water there is in it. And I'm just going everywhere that I know is going to be almost completely black. And that's where I'm putting these shadows in right now, at the bottom and streaking up the top a little bit. These parts that you know are going to be dark. This is the stage where you start picking those out and, and, and making sure you have a lot of contrast of tones, especially with the solid black shape like that. It's the, the more tones that you can shove into a piece like this, the better, because it'll make it look more realistic. Almost nothing is a solid, solid black because it exists in the universe and it reflects light and it absorbs light and absorbs different colors and reflects other colors back. You guys, I'm sure, know how light works. But that's what you really have to pay attention to with something like this is, is how the light hits the object and where the shadows are. You can see his little wings, his little wings all folded up in there. This is actually kind of a sad, kind of a sad drawing for me. I decided to make this drawing in response to an Inktober prompt that was frail. The prompt was frail. And, and frail, 
could easily describe a butterfly at any stage of its life, really. But this particular butterfly I decided to draw, this cocoon, chrysalis, I decided to draw for the frail prompt. I did because this poor little guy never actually made it out of his chrysalis. He, his chrysalis turned clear and I was very excited for him to come out. I I scamped out in my driveway um, quite often for quite a long time waiting for this uh, little butterfly to come out and he just uh, didn't. He passed away, I guess, my little butterfly friend from my driveway. I did some reading to find out why a butterfly would not come out of its chrysalis like this and it turns out that he may have been infected with some sort of butterfly parasite that I'm not terribly knowledgeable about. but. Apparently it infects monarchs, and then if he had if he had managed to make it out of his cocoon, he would have just infected other monarchs with this parasite. So, although it is sad that he never made it out, and I never got to see him crawl out of his chrysalis, at least I suppose he didn't infect other animals with his parasite. So that's the story, the kind of sad story behind my frail drawing. And I was, um, honestly, I was too beat up over it for it being just a little butterfly. I was so excited to see it come out, and, and it just never happened. I did, I almost, that's another time, that's the second time I almost got the chance to see a butterfly come out of his chrysalis. The second time we had rescued one from a plant, that a cocoon, a chrysalis that had gotten knocked off a plant, and we set it up in a terrarium, terrarium inside our house, and fed the caterpillar and watched it go into its chrysalis and he managed to come out of his chrysalis just fine but I unfortunately was not there to see it I missed I missed him coming out so maybe someday maybe someday I'll get to see a butterfly come out of its chrysalis here's hoping and now as you've seen I'm just continuing to add darker and darker areas just slowly but surely that's how you add depth to something like this just slowly add little tones of gray as you go along until you get a nice deep breadth of color and if you'll notice i left the cap up there very very light the cap in the picture in, and in real life you could see through practically it was translucent and that's uh, a little hard to put across in a, in a drawing, but just with that very light gray, and the, you'll see when the masking fluid comes off that there's a nice white highlight in there too, and that really helps sell the idea that it's a, it's a translucent cap. But now I'm just making sure that this, this black wing is as detailed as I want it to be, it has enough little tones in it. And then you make sure that all of your drawing is as dry as possible, completely bone dry, before you start rubbing off your masking fluid like I'm doing right here. You can use an eraser to do this, or your finger. If you've got a big section of masking fluid, sometimes you can peel it off in a single piece, but I just rubbed it with my finger for this time, and it worked just fine. And now that I've rubbed my masking fluid off, I'm going to put more on, but I'm not putting it everywhere that I had it before. I'm just putting, now I'm putting my masking fluid on as, as you would traditionally use masking fluid, only where there are the brightest highlights. I'm covering, covering that back up. So that's going to be where the light is reflecting off of the shiny black top. And it's also going to be in the reflection of my water droplets wherever the water droplet is a is a solid white where it reflects light that's where i'm gonna keep that masking fluid in there and i'm starting with the orange finally this was the part i was really looking forward to because i had spent so much time doing those slight shades of gray that i was super excited to put down this this bright color because his chrysalis was completely clear that's why i was so excited for him to come out because i know that as soon as the chrysalis turns clear he's supposed to come out then within 24 hours of his chrysalis coming becoming clear like that and although he never did he did make a pretty picture all tucked away nicely in his in his translucent chrysalis now these orange tones are very solid right now which is fine 
but as we go on we're gonna we're gonna shade them a little bit more and give them a little bit more depth and these spots over here are already a little bit lighter you don't want a solid tone really there's very rarely a completely solid tone that you make that you draw in a painting there's always little subtle shadings and little bits of reflected light but the orange was fun and fast and now I'm going to work in these little water droplets. And the key to water droplets is making sure that you can see the surroundings reflected in your water droplet and making sure that there is a strong, sharp highlight, which is what my masking fluid did here for me. And there right there, that's actually quite an important part too, is the little shadow. Because the water droplet set on a solid shape like that it'll cast a shadow just like just like anything else will so I make sure that my water droplet here on the bottom shows a reflection of that blue bucket and my water droplet way up here on the main chrysalis shows that orange reflection from the orange that it's setting on and I'm keeping see there's some darker you see you have to be able to see the color really well through the water it's, it's easy to put in a really pale color and think that's good enough, but water is clear. You can see colors really well through, through a droplet of water. It's usually just a shade off or so, but you can, see, you can see the color really well through a droplet of water. So you want to make sure to put enough saturation in that color and that reflection or else it won't look, it won't look realistic. See there, I am adding little bits of other tones to my orange. I'm adding some shading around the outside edge of each shape to give it a little bit more depth. Oh, that's coming along really nice. I really like, I really like how this uh, chrysalis turned out. It's one of my favorite ink illustrations that I've done so far, I think. See, now that I know where everything is supposed to go, I can go in with my extra dark ink, which is one of the most fun parts here at the end, is when you can finally get that black ink and just go to town everywhere that it should be nice and nice and dark and make sure that that darkness shows up. See here is where I had wished that I had kept my masking fluid on the wing for a little bit longer, just because I had to paint around paint around all these little white spots because I wanted them to be a nice bright white spot. So I could have I could have left the masking fluid up there a little bit longer instead of painting around each spot, but it turned out all right. It turned out all right. Now I'm adding a little bit of texture into this shoulder piece here for this butterfly. I believe it's his shoulder piece. It's hard to tell when he's all cuddled up in that cocoon like that. Chrysalis, what? Now I have to look it up now because I can't seem to keep it in my brain what exactly the difference between a cocoon and a chrysalis is. Maybe a cocoon is a different sort of insect? I don't know. I don't know. If you know, let me know in the comments if you have some information for me about cocoons, v cocoons versus chrysalises. I would love to know. Chrysalis I? Chrysalises? I don't even know the plural. See how educated I am, you guys. Oh, now I'm adding in that dark, dark black up there at that top where it connects to the bucket because that was, that was the blackest part of this whole piece. Oh, it looks good. I got some nice vibrant colors in there. Looks like everything's coming together. I really like the shading around this bottom joint at the bottom of the chrysalis here where you can see the fold of his wings and the fold of his body is coming together. That's a really important piece. You have to make it a nice dark line and then shade it out slowly as you as you head toward the center to make it look like a little limb, a little limb tucked in there. Now it looks like I'm re-wetting my paper. Re-wetting my paper. I must need I must think I need to do a little bit more blue work. And I am just a little bit more blue work, making sure I get those edges nice and crisp and those shadows in there how I want. And there I'm taking those masking fluid highlights out, those last little bits of highlight. And now it's done. Now it's all finished and shaky, but it'll be still here in a minute. And there it is, a nice still image of my chrysalis. It looks, it looks really good. It's a sharp illustration and I really like that. It's 
that's really what I was going for, so I'm glad it turned out so well. Let me know if you guys decide to draw a cool chrysalis like this, and let me know if you can't find the link to the picture because I may have forgotten to put it up. I'll do my best, but I may have forgotten. Thank you all for coming along with me here on this video, this painting. I really appreciate it, and if you haven't already, I would love it if you would subscribe or like my video and follow along with some more awesome drawings that I do in the future. Anyways, thank you for coming. Thank you guys. Goodbye. Goodbye.